Welcome to River of Life Online uh, on this belated Sunday morning. It's actually Monday morning. I've been finishing up a few courses at a local university, Crandall University, and uh, my time has run short and my video production has taken a hit. So I apologize for that, but uh, hopefully uh, this we will begin to resume a normal production uh, schedule starting next week. However, not to miss out on a new series that we're beginning this week, I want to come to you, even though it's late, and share this message uh, in our new chapter called Love Builds Bridges. I've put a link up to a conversation that Dave Morehouse, pastor of the Journey Church, and I had uh, related to uh, an introduction to this series, and I would encourage you to watch that to get a, a sense of where we're going with this chapter. But the bottom line is, is that after Easter, we are focused on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And after the resurrection, Luke tells us in Acts chapter 1, that Jesus appeared to his disciples on multiple occasions, giving them convincing proofs that he was alive, and teaching them through the Holy Spirit um, about the kingdom of God. And that idea that Jesus, after the resurrection, after three years of teaching about the kingdom of God, came back to teach more on the kingdom of God is a, a very striking thing that, uh, that Luke speaks of in the opening chapter of the book of Acts. And so we're grabbing a hold of that, that idea that the kingdom of God is such a big idea and it's such an all-encompassing idea that Jesus came back for 40 days after the resurrection to continue teaching the disciples about this central concept of being a follower of Jesus Christ. And so for this next chapter, right up to the end of our ministry year, we are going to be talking about how we need to lead with love in this all-encompassing kingdom of God. And today, we begin by looking at creation. Let's go to scripture and read our passage for today. But for us there is one God, the Father by whom all things were created, and for whom we live. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created, and through whom we live. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. The connection here between God, our Father, and creation is not surprising. That is a pretty basic understanding in the Christian theology. What sometimes Christians don't focus on is the fact that Jesus was there when the cosmos were birthed by the very Word of God. And in fact, it was through the Son, through Jesus Christ, that we see creation come to be. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit at work in complete unity, bringing all things into being. This is a fundamental idea in the Bible, that God is creator. What Paul is bringing out here in chapter 8 of 1 Corinthians is that not only do we need to see God as creator, but we need to understand that Jesus Christ is also connected to the creation you see, in the early church, even in this earliest time, there was already an, a movement of thinking called Gnosticism. Uh, at this early stage, it probably was called Docetism, and it, but the basic ideas were, were similar in that at the very heart of it was this belief that spiritual things were good and that physical things were bad. Basically, it was just uh, Platonic uh, dualism, Greek philo philosophical dualism, this idea that the body is just a husk, just a shell for the soul, and that all that really mattered was the soul, and that the body was fundamentally unimportant. And the Corinthians had gone down this road so far that they were starting to do things that were impacting their spiritual lives. You see, they didn't think they could do anything in their bodies that would actually affect their spiritual lives. They felt the body was meaningless because it was going to be discarded. It was just the, the husk of the, of, the, of the kernel, and what was really important was what was inside. And so we even read in Corinthians about certain men in the church going to uh, visit prostitutes. Uh, and they didn't think that that was a problem. 
They were eating at temple meals with food offered to idols because, hey, there's only one God. These are just make-believe gods. And they didn't take into consideration the weaker people in the congregation who still had attachments and were working their way out of those old spiritual affiliations. They just saw it all as not meaningful. It didn't matter because it was all rooted in this world. And what really mattered was the spirit was the soul. So if you want to have sexual relations with a prostitute in a physical body, no big deal. It's not going to affect you spiritually. That's what they were saying. But Paul says, he says something very different if you read this book. And I actually really enjoy reading 1 Corinthians because I find that many of the struggles in the North American church and the Western church in general are rooted in this fundamental error that the Corinthians had. And that was this separation between the things of this world and the things of the spirit, of the spiritual reality. The fact is, as we read scripture, and if we truly understand reality based on scripture, we have to see that God created all things. And not just some lesser God, uh, as Marcion would say in the centuries to follow, but rather the good and gracious God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ created all things. And it was through Jesus Christ that all things were created. And we read in John's Gospel that there was nothing made that has been made unless it came through the Logos or Jesus Christ, the one who became flesh and dwelt among us. And so this is a very important passage as we read 1 Corinthians because Paul is correcting the Corinthians all through this letter to have a healthier and more uh, theologically true view of creation. It was not something to be thrown away. It was not something to be undervalued. The, our human bodies, our existence, everything is important to God because it was a good God who created a good creation. And we are here now uh, groaning just like creation. In Romans 8, it says that through no fault of his own, uh, the creation groans under the strain of the curse. But we too uh, groan under the strain of the curse. We have loved ones die and we have loved ones get sick. We see famine and disaster around the world. We're in the midst of a global pandemic where disease seems to be winning in many cases. And there are poor places in the world which will be disadvantaged in a very um, disproportionate way because of their lack of money and their inability to, uh, to buy vaccines for their people. And so we're going to see all kinds of disparity in the world uh, in these days to come, separating the rich from the poor. And a lot of the lack of concern that happens in our Christian churches in the wealthy Western nations is rooted in this idea that the body is not as important as the soul. Let's send missionaries to these poor countries and tell them about Jesus so that their souls can be saved. And I agree with that. Let's do that. Uh, everyone needs to hear about the liberating, life-giving message of Jesus Christ. But guess what? Uh, a warm meal and a blanket on a cold night are also things that can be done in love that show the true heart of Jesus Christ. It's not just words. It's also action. Because things that are done in the body matter. But how many times in, the, in Paul's letter to the Corinthians does he talk about things that are done in the body? He talks about being judged for things that were done in the body. He says that we were paid for uh, with a price in Jesus Christ and that, and that it mattered what we did in the body. You see, the Corinthians said it didn't matter what they did in the body. It was all just part of an old creation that was going to be washed away with fire, burnt up to a crisp and destroyed. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth that were spiritual in nature. But what Paul is saying is they fundamentally misunderstood the God of the Bible. It was God, the good God and Father of Jesus Christ, who made all things. And he declared them to be good. And we need to have this at work in our thinking as well. If we only think that spiritual things are important, if we only think that um, 
uh, that what matters is the spiritual part of our lives and we pay no attention to the creation around us, we are missing the point of the resurrection. You see, Jesus had his body, his physical body, raised from the dead. Now, I know someone's going to say, yeah, but it's different. They didn't recognize him on the road to Emmaus. That's true. It is different. It's a glorious body that has been freed from the shackles of sin and the curse. So yeah, it's different. But guess what? It's still the resurrected body of Jesus Christ. He held out his hands to Thomas and said, put your finger in here. You know, if you want to see the scars on my hands and the holes in my side where I was stabbed with a spear, come in here, come over here and touch me and see. Thomas didn't have to because he saw the marks on the hands and the side of the Lord Jesus, the reminders of what he paid for you and for me to live forever with Christ, with God, with the Spirit in heaven. And what is heaven? Well, the Bible tells us that heaven and earth, heaven comes down and becomes part one with earth uh, in the new creation, in this next part of the story that God has to write. But yet we don't talk about that. We just want to be spirit beings floating around the universe, thinking that that would be really cool or something. But what it really shows is our bias towards spiritual things and our lack of understanding regarding the created world. God made all things, and he made all things good. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ declares to everyone that the physical realm of this world is good because God made it. And therefore, the, um, the edict of Genesis chapter 1, where God created all things, and he created men and women, and, and it doesn't matter how you read that story. The point is, is that men and women uh, in that story were told to go and be fruitful and to be stewards of creation, to basically be God's representative as image of God bearers in this world we were to steward this world well. And when we look around, we can't help but see that we have failed. We have not stewarded well. Part of it is because we are uh, in large degree materialists. We just see the world as stuff, filled with stuff, something to be commodified, turned into value through making money. We measure everything's value by money. We value people in relation to how much money they can make. Money is really the Lord of this realm. And, uh, and, and as Christians, though, we have one Lord, Jesus Christ. And we need to live our lives with that in truth, not just in word, not just as an idea, but we need to actually shape our thinking so that it reflects the thinking of Jesus Christ. He came back for 40 days and he taught the disciples about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God that is connected to our understanding of this world and the value of God's creation. When Paul culminates his argument when it comes to a climax in 1 Corinthians, it's related to the resurrection of Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians 15. And it's kind of the opposite of what we would expect. We would expect to say, hey, Corinthians, Jesus rose from the dead. Isn't that great? I guess there is a resurrection. But Paul actually takes it in the opposite direction. And in a way, he does come to that point eventually. But he also says, resurrection is true. Resurrection is part of God's plan. And if there is no resurrection, then we're in big trouble because that means Jesus isn't raised from the dead. And then we're still in our sins and we're to be pitied above all people. No, resurrection is real. Resurrection is true. This creation that God has made will be um, refined as with fire. There's no question about that. Romans 8 talks about that. How the whole creation groans waiting to be relieved from the burden of the curse. But the Bible also says that we're going to be refined as though by fire in 1 Corinthians. Being refined by fire doesn't mean that something's completely destroyed and therefore useless. The whole idea of being refined by fire is that all the impurities, all the things that are part of the curse, let's say, are going to be burned off and taken away. And what will be left is the beauty and the, uh, the wonder of God's creation. 
So when we read in Scripture that the world's going to be burned up, the metaphor that's used there is that all of the things that mark this world as sinful and corrupt will be burned away by the power of God. And that what will come out of that is a new earth, a new earth that has been relieved of the curse and the corruption of sin, just like us in the resurrection. And Jesus is the first fruit, the firstborn of the dead, the, the one who tells us that this is going to happen, that this creation that God made is important, and we need to take care of it. Earth Day is coming up on Thursday this, this week. Uh, I don't know what you have planned for that. It's not a big celebration by any means in our culture or even in my home. But it's something that reminds me that this creation that God has made is something that I am responsible as a follower of Jesus Christ to care for. I need to be vigilant as I care for what God has made. If I lent you a very expensive book, I look at my bookshelf here and I see books up on my shelf that cost hundreds of dollars. And if I lent those to you to look at and I said, just take care of it, and you took it out in the water and rained on it and then marked it all up and chopped out pages because you wanted to put it in a scrapbook or something and then gave it back to me, I hope you wouldn't think that that was okay. I certainly hope you'd tell me you thought it was okay before you took my book because you may not get one. Uh, because when we borrow something from someone else, we are to steward it and to care for it and to make sure it gets back to that person in the same condition that it was given to us. That's a fundamental understanding. You don't ruin things that belong to someone else. You care for them. And God has put us into this world, not that we own the world, the world's not ours. The Bible says very clearly, the earth is the Lord and everything that is in it. Um, and the, the people and the inhabitants thereof. And the Psalms declare it well. And we need to be cognizant of that as we work our way through our lives. That this world is not ours. This world is God's. And we're simply caring for it. And if we're cutting it up and chopping it apart and marking it up and leaving it out in the rain and pulling out pages like that book for our own use without any thought at all that this doesn't really belong to me, well, we may be in for a surprise someday. I'm not saying that we will lose our salvation or anything like that. That is firmly affixed in the cross of Jesus. But I want to please God. I want to please my Heavenly Father who gave so much to save me. And I'm sure you do too. This year as we move our way into Earth Day, as we think about what does the kingdom of God have to say about creation, let's think about caring better for the world around us. And when we say, well, how does that connect with love? Because we are talking about love building bridges in this chapter. Let me just say this. Our neighbors are not just the people that live next door to us. Our neighbors can actually be far away. And the things that we do in our world here and now, in this place, can sometimes have a very disastrous effect on someone else far away. We see that now in the midst of pandemic. Something that started very, very far away is having a dramatic impact on our lives here. This is true environmentally as well. There are things that we are doing here in the West as we are uh, going through resources like there were there's no, no tomorrow. But there is a tomorrow. And we need to be, as Christians, people who think about not just ourselves and getting through life ourselves. We need to think of our grandchildren and our grandchildren's grandchildren and their grandchildren. Will Jesus come back before that? Perhaps. We don't know. And because we don't know, we better take care that we give something to them where they can survive and live with the same joy and freedom that we have. And even better. Let's take care of creation. Love builds bridges. It builds bridges to creation, but it also builds bridges to future generations who will inherit what we give to them. Let's pray together. God, we ask that you would help us to understand the impact that we can have 
when we think poorly about creation. Help us to grab a hold of this passage in 1 Corinthians 8 and truly be changed by our understanding that you uh, made all things and that it was through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that all things were made. There is not a division between the God of the Old Testament and the God of Jesus Christ. There is a fundamental unity here as we see in 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Help us, Lord, in our lives to understand that this world that you have made and given to us to manage and steward for you is something we must care for every single day. Help us to be mindful, God, of what you would have us do to be your people, people of your kingdom, people who follow the way of Jesus, people who follow the way of love. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at River of Life Online. As I uh, just say goodbye today, let me just read one more passage of Scripture related to this idea of creation. It's from Revelation 4, verse 11, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you pleased. You know, at the end of time, when we stand around the throne of God, we will all declare together that everything we see, everything that exists, is because of the power and the hand of God. And we are living in the midst of a domain right now that God has made. And we can sing that song even now, that we value the God who made all things. And we can show that by valuing what he made. This week, let's make a difference. God bless you, and I'll see you back here in seven days. Relevant, practical, authentic river of life.